Welcome to Psych for Psychology's video on the origin, history and development of forensic psychology. So what is forensic psychology? Let's get into it. According to the British Psychological Society, forensic psychology is the application of psychology with people and organisations connected with the court, health or justice systems. Their aims include working with people to create more hopeful futures, supporting pathways to safer communities and to assisting people with a range of mental health experiences towards pathways of recovery and reconnection. According to the American Psychological Association, forensic psychology is a specialty in professional psychology characterized by activities primarily intended to provide professional psychological expertise within the judicial and legal systems. We will cover the following sections, early legal concepts and the Middle Ages, Enlightenment and the 19th century science meets crime, early 20th century the emergence of forensic psychology, mid 20th century legal landmarks and institutional development, modern development from the 1900s to today and contemporary issues and future directions. Let's rewind to 1324 and the statutes at large under Edward II which laid the groundwork for forensic psychology. These statutes not only introduced the role of the coroner to investigate debts, but also addressed the management of estates for those deemed lunatics or idiots. These terms were used in the medieval context for individuals with mental incapacity. By recognizing the impact of mental health on legal matters this month, an early intersection of psychology, behavior and justice paving the way for the field we study today. Also during the 14th century and the evolution of Bethlehem Royal Hospital, often referred to as Bedlam, while founded in 1247 as a priory, it became one of the first institutions to house people with mental illnesses. Though practices at the time were rudimentary, Bethlehem marked an important shift towards institutional approaches to mental health, laying early groundwork for what would later intersect with forensic psychology and the understanding of behavior, crime, and justice. The legal concepts of mens rea, guilty mind and actus ruse, guilty act, emerged as central tenets in assessing criminal liability. These concepts remain vital in modern criminal law and underpin the rationale for involving psychological assessments in legal settings. If the defendant lacks the mental capacity to form intent or to understand the wrongfulness of their actions, they may not be held criminally responsible. The Enlightenment period, 17th-18th centuries, promoted reason, scientific inquiry and empirical evidence principles that began to influence thinking about crime and deviance. During the 19th century, emerging fields of biology and psychology attempted to find measurable and observable traits that could predict criminal behavior. Pseudoscientific theories like phrenology, the study of skull shape and physiognomy, the belief that facial features reveal character, gained popularity. While these approaches are now discredited, they were part of early efforts to link physical attributes to criminal tendencies, reflecting the desire to quantify and predict behavior. The most influential figure of this era was Cesare Lombroso, an Italian criminologist. In The Criminal Man, 1876, Lombroso proposed that certain individuals were biologically predisposed to criminality, so-called born criminals. He believed these individuals could be identified by physical anomalies, such as asymmetrical faces or large jaws. The early 20th century saw the formal emergence of forensic psychology as a distinct area of inquiry, Hugo Munsterberg, student of Wilhelm I, the founder of experimental psychology, played pioneering role. His 1908 book, On the Witness, Stan, argued forcefully for the application of psychology to courtroom proceedings. Munsterberg addressed topics such as the fallibility of memory, the unreliability of eyewitnesses, the mechanism, false confessions, and the importance of psychological expertise in legal decisions. At the same time, intelligence testing was beginning to be used in educational and legal contexts. Alfred Binet developed the first practical IQ test in France and Louis Terman later adapted it for American use, Stanford Binet Test. These tests became central in evaluating defendants' cognitive abilities, influencing judgments around competency, culpability, and sentencing. The seeds of criminal profiling were also planted during this time. While not as formalized as today's techniques, early criminal investigations, such as attempts to understand the psychology of Jack the Ripper, hinted at growing recognition that behavior could provide clues to identity and motive. These ideas would later be institutionalized in agencies like the FBI's Behavioral Science Unit. 
a mid-20th century brought significant legal and institutional developments that shaped forensic psychology as a formal discipline. The field expanded to include research on jury decision-making, deception detection, expert witness credibility, and the psychological assessment of competence to stand trial. Dusky v. United States, 1960, set a major legal precedent. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled that defendants must have a rational and factual understanding of the proceedings and be able to consult with their lawyer with a reasonable degree of rational understanding. This case established the modern standard for determining legal competency and led to an increased demand for forensic psychological assessments. Meanwhile, institutions began to recognize forensic psychology as a legitimate subfield. In 1981, the American Psychological Association established Division 41, the American Psychology Law Society, formalizing the field within academic and professional circles. In the UK, forensic psychology gained momentum through roles in Her Majesty's Prison Service and the National Health Service. By the late 1990s, the BP recognized forensic psychology as chartered specialty, allowing professionals to become accredited in the discipline. Since the 1990s, forensic psychology has rapidly expanded in both scope and influence. It now encompasses a wide range of activities, risk assessment, tools like the HER20 Historical, Clinical Risk Management 20, and Static 99 are used to estimate the likelihood of violent or sexual reoffending. These assessments inform parole decisions, treatment planning, and court sentencing. Eyewitness research advances in cognitive psychology have revealed how memory is malleable and subject to distortion. Factors like leading questions, stress, and cross-racial identification can affect accuracy. These insights have influenced the way police conduct interviews and lineups. Neuroscience, brain imaging, and neuropsychological testing are occasionally used in court to assess cognitive functioning, especially in cases involving brain injury, developmental disorders. However, their use remains ethically and legally controversial. Forensic psychologists now work in diverse settings, courts, prisons, secure hospitals, family law courts, and private practice. Their responsibilities include competency evaluations, risk assessments, psychotherapeutic interventions, parenting assessments, and consultation with legal professionals. The profession is both scientifically rigorous and ethically complex, requiring a balance between clinical insight and legal standards. Today's forensic psychologists face a host of emerging challenges, global variation, different countries of varying definitions, qualifications, and scopes of practice for forensic psychology, leading to inconsistency in training and professional identity. Ethical dilemmas. Do or all issues arise when psychologists are asked to serve as both therapist and evaluator, which can compromise objectivity, ensuring informed consent, especially in forensic contexts, remains critical concern. Bias and inequality, racial, socioeconomic, and cultural biases can influence forensic assessments and outcomes. There is increasing advocacy for culturally sensitive assessment tools and anti discriminatory practices. Digital crime, the rise of cybercrime, online harassment, and virtual offenses presents new opportunities and challenges for psychological investigation. Understanding digital behavior and its implications for law enforcement is an area of ongoing research. Trauma-informed practice, there is growing movement toward integrating trauma-informed approaches, recognizing the role of adverse experiences in shaping behavior and vulnerability to criminal justice involvement. Looking ahead, forensic psychology is expected to become increasingly interdisciplinary, drawing on artificial intelligence, data science, neuroethics, and global justice frameworks. Time for an overview. We haven't looked at this topic extensively, but we have covered major ground. From medieval legal principles to modern neuropsychological assessments, the history of forensic psychology reveals a discipline that has grown through the confluence of law, science, and human rights. While once limited to primitive notions of insanity and spectacle, forensic psychology today stands as a dynamic, research-informed field central to systems worldwide. As it continues to evolve, the discipline must remain committed to ethical integrity, cultural competence and scientific rigor. Whether dealing with offenders, victims or institutions, forensic psychologists play a vital role in interpreting the complex interplay between the human mind and the rule of law. If you'd like to see a video on a specific topic in forensic psychology, let us know in the comments. This is Psyched for Psychology. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more.